Hello and welcome to Center Ice Cardcast, your one-stop podcast shop for all things hockey cards. My name is Eric Andrews, also known in the hobby as Hammerhawks, and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow hobbyist Aaron Goldstein, better known as Crease Collector. All right, kicking things off tonight, we just wanted to start off by uh, just sharing a small piece of news within the hobby. As Upper Deck uh, just quietly announced uh, one of their new products uh, that will be coming out at the, at the end of the month. And that's um, the SB Game Use CHL version. So that's the Canadian Hockey League version, for those who don't know, for the first time. So, so we're just going to give you a quick uh, synopsis of um, SB Game Use CHL. Uh, the stated release date is uh, July 29th. Uh, and uh, it's just it's very simple and it's just compared to the NHL version. Um, just a, a quick product there to watch out for. It's going to be uh, it's going to have some great throwback designs. And um, it's going to be a good opportunity for you guys to get um, some Lafreniere um, memorabilia cards, hopefully, so uh, and some autographs, I'm sure. So um, definitely look out for that. And uh, Eric's just going to take it away here with um, our Upper Deck Stature review. So uh, Eric, if you don't mind, just take it away whenever you're ready. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just touching on the SP Game UC show, I think it'll just be really interesting to see how that's received. You know, there hasn't really been a product like that kind of having a a little bit of a higher end chl product from upper deck really hasn't been done in close to 20 years at this point so it'll just be interesting to see how people react to that like you mentioned it'll be nice to have some additional lafreniere autograph and memorabilia cards but there'll also be other players like quentin byfield and i'd assume that guys like Marco Rossi will be in it, Cole Perfetti. So other guys that are in this year's draft class will definitely be highlights of the product as well. Um, And then turning to 2019-20 Upper Deck Stature, which was just released on Wednesday, July 15th as the newest NHL product from Upper Deck. And that is a new product for this year as well. It's the third brand new product in Upper Deck Stable this year. And it is a really interesting product in the sense that it's pretty simple when you look at the amount of cards within the product. You know, there's not a a whole lot going on as far as all kinds of insert sets and things like that. It's, It's pretty basic and straightforward, but there's a lot to like about it. So just going into some of the general details, there's just one pack per box with eight cards per pack, though a lot of boxes actually do have an extra ninth card. And within a box break, there isn't necessarily a consistent breakdown, but generally speaking, you're going to see two base cards, one rookie card, two or three base or rookie parallels. And then there's one autograph that's guaranteed, but you might get a second, and then one or two insert cards. And like any product, it depends where you look, but generally speaking, you'd be spending about 110 US or 135 Canadian per box from local card shop or an online retailer. And as far as the content of the product, probably the most important thing to note about the cards is that all of the cards are produced on a thick rainbow foil stock. So every single card within the product immediately has that sense of just being a really quality card, you know, just from the actual feel of it. And that has obvious implications as far as the look as well. It just, everything about the cards creates a high end feeling. And as far as the base cards go, there's a 100 card base set as well as a hundred additional rookie cards. And the rookie cards are numbered out of 399. And there are parallels for the base and rookie cards that are green, red, blue, and black, as well as portrait variations. And the base and rookies are just kind of the standard foil colors, the the normal base cards, with the rookies being out of 85. And then the base and rookies also have red and purple parallels as well. And then as far as inserts, there are three different insert sets throughout the product. There is the Century Momentous set which focuses on 25 all-time legends of the game. There is the esteemed insert set which focuses on 25 current stars and there is rookie reliance which focuses on 50 top rookies from this season and all three of those insert sets also have green red blue and black parallels to go along with them as well. And then of course one of the main draws of the product is the autograph content And there are base and rookie autographs that just mimic the standard base design. 
with the base cards being unnumbered and the rookies being out of 199. And of course, those also come in a number of parallel versions in green, red, blue, and black. As well, the three insert sets all have autograph variations of their own, and those have green, red, blue, and black parallels. And then, of course, the, the big chase cards of the product are the autograph patch cards. And again, those go across the entire product with base cards and all three of the insert sets as well. And it's really interesting to note that those autograph patch cards, no matter what set they're coming from, are all extremely limited and very hard to find as far as just pulling one. If you just look at the checklist, 33 is the highest print run for any autograph patch card in the entire product. So every autograph patch card that you would pull is extremely limited. And of course, those go down all the way to being one of ones. And as far as being hard to pull, they're actually case hits. It's possible that you could hit a second autograph patch within a case, but generally speaking, you're only going to be pulling one within a 12 box case. So needless to say, they are really rare pulls and obviously one of the biggest draws of the product. And then turning to our analysis a little bit, I mean, I think the, the biggest pro of the product just has to be how nice the cards look. I mean, they are just stunning cards. I think the rainbow foil stock that was used is just stunning. It gives a really nice pop to the cards. And one way I kind of like to describe them to people is that it almost feels like Upper Deck's version of Topps Gold Label from back in the day. Yeah. Um, and anyone that knows of Topps Gold Label from, from the late 90s and early 2000s know that those are among the nicest looking cards ever made. So I, I think that Stature really has a similar vibe to Topps Gold Label in that sense, especially with the base cards. And like I mentioned earlier, another pro for me is that it's a really simple product. There's not too much going on within the product. There's not all of these distractions of, you know, 20 different insert sets and all that. It's kind of like they just determined what the product was going to be and they stuck to it. And even though there's parallels for every single one of those sets, it, I think it's really tastefully done. Um, and then another obvious pro of the product, you know, without a doubt, I don't think anybody can debate this, is that to the best of my knowledge, every single autograph card in the entire product is on card. So you're not going to see any stickers in stature whatsoever. Going back to the look of the cards, I think that not only just the actual construction of the cards makes them look nice, but I, I really like the design throughout pretty much the entire product. I think there's a really classy feel for the base cards, the rookie cards, and the insert sets as well. I think it, it just kind of has that lasting design that, you know, just stands out and grabs your attention as being something that feels and looks really nice. So I think Upper Deck did a really nice job on the design across the board. Another thing to note is that there are unique patterns on many of the colored parallels, particularly within those insert sets. And just to kind of clarify what, what I mean by that a little bit, it's really similar to how OPG Platinum uses different patterns on the colored base parallels. So you might see one pattern on the Seismic Gold parallel versus the Emerald Surge has a different pattern for that. And the Golden Treasures has its own thing and the Violet Pixels and all that. So there's, there's a unique look to each of the parallels. And I know it's the case with the insert sets from what I've seen so far is that they each kind of have their own unique look for the parallels, which I think is just a nice added touch. And then one final pro that I, again, I think is pretty hard to dispute. Billy even mentioned this when he was on the podcast with us a little while ago, that for what you are getting within a box, the price point is really solid. You know, like I, agree. I, like I said, you're looking at, you know, a hundred dollars US, a hundred ten dollars US, you know, 130, 135 Canadian. And even though you're you might only be getting eight or nine cards within that box, and even though you very well might get an autograph that's just kind of of a somewhat common rookie every single card that you're pulling is a really quality card you know you're not getting just um you know kind of plain jane base cards and a, a write-off insert set no like every single card in the product is a quality card that you know is worth collecting so i think given that price point and given what you're getting it's a really really solid product um, as far as cons go, 
I really had to kind of think about, you know, if there was a con with Stature. I mean, I, I really think it's a good product and I, I really like what I see so far. If I could pick one thing to, to point out as a con, it might be the design of the Rookie Reliance insert set. It just kind of doesn't really feel consistent with the other designs. It feels a little bit bland and there isn't that almost like a regal feel of it. It just, it just feels like it doesn't belong within the rest of the designs of the product. And I'm not it saying- It could have been, so it's hard to jump in. It could have been like, like this sometimes happens a lot where uh, you know, a, a design doesn't make the cut for another product, but someone really wants to get it in there. So it might be that the Rookie Reliance, I'm not sure, I'm just kind of speculating that it might have been planned for another product or it might have been planned at a previous day and then it finally made it into stature. And then that's why it might feel that it doesn't truly belong because it may not have. Yeah, that's interesting. And that it's kind of funny because when I was thinking about that, it honestly felt like it was more of an OPG Platinum kind of insert, like just that look. It could have been. And I'm not even saying that I don't like the look of them. I'm just saying I don't think it fits in with the rest of them. But yeah, right. that's, an, that's an interesting point. And I hadn't thought of that. But yeah, I mean, who, who knows if that's, if that's the case or not. But yeah, that, that's definitely an interesting point. Um, 100%. Yeah. So like I said, I've, I've really liked what I've seen from the product. It's almost impossible to dispute the quality of the cards. I mean, they're it, gorgeous cards. Yeah. <laughs> if, they're if, really, really nice. Very nice. Yeah, if you don't think they're nice, then I think we need to have a conversation. There, there's a problem if, 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 you know, upper deck stature cards are not nice in your eyes. Yes. Yeah. No, they're so very nice. I think given that it's a new product, I think a lot of people were kind of unsure about what to expect. And for good reason, you know, it's just hard to expect things from a product that's never happened before. But given that, I think um, upper deck did a really nice job with the product. And uh, yeah, I, I really like it. What do you think, Aaron? Um, I love it. I, I just, just getting uh, the, from the product previews, I really, really excited for this set. It was something brand new from Upper Deck, so I was really excited uh, to see what they can do with that. Um, another point that I just wanted to bring up was the, the good mix of not only current players, but also a healthy mix of some old school guys as well. I think that was really nice to see that, that, that Upper Deck is consciously trying to get those older players in there. Um, I believe they had an agreement to kind of get some of those older guys in there. So it's nice to see that they're following through on that and uh, kind of like a chronology, but not as much um, that they're really trying to put a, 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 like a nice focus on those veteran players. I think that's, um, that's a very nice thing to see. Um, like another thing, as far as the cards go, I was saying before the show, it looks like half of these cards were like dipped in cotton candy or something. Like it's just, it's phenomenal how they look. Um, I'm, I'm a real big fan. And um, yeah, so definitely in, in my eyes, um, Eric, you touched on a lot, a lot of these points, but in my eyes, um, I, I feel like Upper Deck did a fantastic job. And the price point is, is, is very favorable, especially for those in the U.S., uh, for those Canadians like myself. We're looking at about uh, 130, 135 ish. So, I mean, not terrible, uh, considering you might end up with about nine cards. So, um, especially a, a hot product such as this, um, you know, you can't really go wrong uh, to get some of uh, the newest offerings from Upper Deck. So, definitely um, a double thumbs up for me on that one. Yeah, absolutely. And just following up on that a little bit, as far as um, the veteran autograph ratio, obviously, you know, it's hard to give an exact ratio when you have all of the parallels and and things like that. But just looking at the actual base autograph cards, veterans fall one in four packs, you know, and and that's just for the base cards. You know, you could get a veteran parallel auto in your pack and that doesn't go toward the one in four. So like you said, it is a good mix. And you also have those insert autographs as well. I'm looking at the checklist right now, the Century Momentous autograph cards, which again, those those feature legends of the game, most of which actually for the autograph cards, all of which are retired players. Those are one in 50. And then there are the parallel versions of those. So, and you know, that checklist features names like Gretzky and Yager and Patrick Waugh and Brodeur and Bobby Orr. So you have that really high end autograph 
content as far as veterans and legends go, but you still do have that high end rookie autograph content with, you know, your, your Hughes and McCarr and doc and all those guys as well. All right. And now to the big hobby news that just kind of blew up all the forums this week. Um, the David Pasternak, uh, 2014, 2015, uh, cup RPAs are finally live. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, these cards were a redemption for, for the past five years. And a lot of people thought that they weren't going to get made at all. I think Pasternak has been a notorious tough signer, especially when he was a rookie. So um, it's good to see that he's coming around and, and Upper Deck is able to get his stuff out uh, with his autograph. So definitely very exciting news for sure, uh, especially after five years. So uh, for those collectors who had a redemption and, and, and stuck it out, you know, for a couple of years now, it's been uh, quite the payoff as um, there's been a lot of Bruins collectors and Pasternak fans you know, chomping at the bit for his, his RPAs from the cup. So definitely well done to those who, um, who kept them. They are um, photo shoot patches, which are, um, you know, an industry standard, especially uh, for the cup. And they're numbered out of uh, 249, which is, again, the standard for the rookie RPAs. Um, but the main um, uh, thing for these cards is that uh, when collectors receive them in hand, um, after waiting five years for a redemption, these um, autograph RPAs were sticker autographs, which is um, not uh, normal for the cup. They are uh, normally uh, all hard signed. Um, it has happened in the past uh, that RPAs have surfaced um, after a couple of years with sticker autographs, but for a high profile player like David Pasternak and his hobby value now uh, for, um, for his cup RPA, like such a, are arguably his his most notable rookie card to be sticker autographs that was it definitely made a lot of waves in the hobby this week and for those who don't know before we get into it um the difference between you you've heard us say hard sign and sticker auto uh, throughout this podcast so far but um the difference is between a sticker auto and an on-card auto is just that um an on-card auto is a card that uh the player uh, physically actually held in their hands or, uh, or or touched themselves and actually wrote the autograph um, on the card themselves. And a sticker autograph is when the player was sent a, um, a page full of stickers, probably a box full, to be honest with you, of stickers. And they signed sticker by sticker and sent them back to the company. And then Upper Deck, when they were manufacturing and, and producing these cards for pack out, uh, they would actually take the sticker off the page and, um, and fix it to the cards themselves. So um, a lot of collectors don't like that. I definitely see why. But um, a point that I want to bring up before we get into the Pasternak itself is that why is sticker autos um, just necessary? Well, this isn't really the, the 1990s. Um, a lot of players, um, especially through the, the NHLPA, which does encourage their players to sign, for Upper Deck or whoever the licensed manufactured card companies are, they are encouraged to sign these cards. So, so what happens is you have um, over 600 players in the NHL and a fair bit of them are asked to sign cards. And this isn't just, um, you know, North America we're talking. We're talking about, um, you know, the U.S., Canada, uh, and all across Europe, of course. And these players are asked to sign these cards primarily during the off season, because that's when, of course, they have the most downtime. And um, when you're trying to plan a product uh, and you want to have um, a bunch of, of star players around the league, getting all these players to sign is very, very difficult. So it's, much more, it's, it's a much more easier task to actually send these sticker sheets out. Uh, it's cheaper, and it gets it out to these players. And it allows them to sit down and sign however many autographs you want of them. It's not, you know, the 50 cards you plug in a box or the 100 cards. You can send probably thousands of stickers to them. And you know when you get that back, which who knows when, you're able to secure, um, you know, a thousand or a good couple hundred autographs of said player for, for use now, but also in future products. So if you're a card manufacturer, trying to work with these players it's very very favorable on your side it's it's cheaper to get uh, a player to sign 
a sticker autograph. Now, uh, you know, the card companies are human beings. They are filled with collectors and they know that given the choice, the average collector would like an on-card autograph uh, as opposed to a sticker. But, and that is their priority uh, when it comes to most products, especially higher end. Um, if you're in a lower end product, chances are you'll see a sticker auto there. And so those are necessary as well to plug autograph cards in those lower end cards as well for some chase cards as well and keep costs down. So it's definitely a necessary evil I like to refer to so that we as collectors are able to see as many autographs as we do from as many players as possible in as many products as possible. So um, it's definitely something that without the sticker autographs, the um, autograph and card market would look vastly different. Um, and chances are there would be some negatives with that too. So um, like I said, it's a necessary evil, but card companies do tend to focus on and, and hope to get on card autos first. But sometimes these, these things do happen. Um, and I just wanted to kind of open up the floor here, Eric. Um, just what are your thoughts on, on sticker autos? Like when someone says sticker autos to you, like, like what's your kind of gut reaction as opposed to the classic um, on card auto? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's important to think about the context of what that card is. You know, like you said, if it's something like an MVP or something like that, that's a low end release that they're just including autographs as chase cards. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. You know, there, I think there's definitely a time and a place for stickers. And obviously a product like the cup isn't necessarily the, the place for that. But like we've said, you know, sometimes it's just necessary. You know, the, the logistics of, getting on card signatures really you know is a very involved it's a process. nightmare um, it's a nightmare yeah and i think a lot of the time people can easily overlook the fact that products are being made so far in, in advance absolutely they're having to you know plan the products well ahead of time i mean we when we had billy on he was mentioning how you know upper deck ice is already built for next year yeah, these products are the lead time they need on these products uh, just to start sending cards out and getting them ready for pack out is um, is massive, uh, you know, especially for those premier products. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something that doesn't come up in a weekend or two. It's a long time and the card companies need to be aware of that and they need to negotiate with the player and things like that. And, and they need and they don't deal with the like another interesting point. They don't deal with. Um, the players themselves. Um, I'm sure there's a case, you know, at an all-star game or something like that where they're actually in touch with the player. But a lot of times uh, for these autographed cards, they're in touch with the agent for the majority of that, uh, I guess, conversation, you could say, uh, and that deal. And so if there's any hiccup with the autographs or if they're wondering, if Upper Deck is wondering about turnaround time, they're going to contact um, the agent or the um, whoever is representing that player. So it's a very hard thing to connect with the player face to face about like, Hey, you know, Sid, like we really need those autographs back in a week. Like it's a very hard thing to do. And of course these card companies are also um, banking on these players as well. So they're not going to push too much if say for, you know, a Sidney Crosby is laid on his autographs. Uh, a Sidney Crosby is probably a bad example because he, he is a very uh, quality signer and um, his, his stuff is usually, um, you know, lower than uh, the majority of the players signing for products. But just for an example, um, they don't want to jeopardize the relationship, the business relationship for these NHL players. So it's a very um, short tightrope that, that Upper Deck has to walk, um, that they really want these autographs, as many as they can get for um, a product right now and for future products, um, but they can't harp on the player. They can't take back money if something's been already agreed upon. So it's a very, um, you know, it's a conversation that's very delicate. And so sometimes in order to fulfill that relationship and fulfill that contract, um, sticker autos need to be done so they can um, fulfill the agreement for this product, but also for say next year's product. 
So that being said, um, there's a lot of logistical rhymes or reasons about why sticker autos exist. So, and just so people are aware, 99% um, um, of the cup RPAs are usually hard signed autographs. So it's not like this is going to be a new thing going forward or anything like that. Um, Upper Deck was probably more disappointed than some collectors, I'm sure. Um, it's something that they held out for five years in order to um, secure that hard sign autograph from Pasternak. I, I heard he's a tough signer, especially towards his rookie uh, years there, but, um, but now he seems to be pretty good. But I guess it just got to the point where for Upper Deck, uh, they don't want to have these things in the queue forever. I know five years is a long time, but I'm sure at Upper Deck they had a drop dead date and I'm sure it, it, you know, it came and went. And they're like, okay, well, you know, this isn't something we do with the cup, but we, we, you know, we have to do it. We need to get these cards out to collectors. You know, who knows how many have already re requested replacements and they know that it's getting on collectors nerves. So they want to at least produce the card with an autograph on it, you know? So um, I'm sure with their internal discussions and their internal deadlines, they don't want to have this hanging over their head for years and years. So I'm sure it just got to a point where, hey, we want to get these redemptions out. It's been five years. We have to put a sticker on it. Uh, it's not what we want to do, but it's what we have to do right now. So it's either that or no card at all. So, um, hey, you know, it's not something I like to see on the cup, you know, Upper Deck's premier product. Uh, and it was quite disappointing for some collectors, I'm sure. But the cards are going to sell very well regardless, um, just to make that clear. Uh, the, a sticker autograph is not going to tank the value, especially for a card like this. So um, especially when there's, I'm sure, less than uh, 249 out there. So who knows how many are really out there. So um, yeah, congrats to all the collectors who did receive these cards. Uh, for those who are a little hot-headed about it, I hear you 100%, especially for a cup card. But again, it's just one of those things where, you know, you got to see both sides a little bit and, uh, and know that it is a, um, you know, like I said, uh, a necessary evil sometimes. So, um, yeah, Eric, if you have any um, thoughts on the Pasternak, just let me know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one thing I wanted to touch on that you actually just mentioned right there was this is kind of a little bit of a unique case in the sense of obviously this card was always intended to be an on-card autograph. You know, yeah. there, was, there was never any point in this process where Upper Deck said, you know, oh, well, you know, if, if we have to do stickers, you know, whatever, you know, not a big deal. No, like for this card, and especially for such a high-level player as Pasternak, you want that to be an on-card autograph in, you know, whatever it takes. But after almost five years, I mean... <laughs> it, yeah it, i know enough's it, enough you know you got to get the card out yeah it got to the point where it was like okay it's at the point now where like you said it's either this is a sticker autograph or the card doesn't happen and personally i don't think it's right for that card to not exist so especially player or sorry um collectors paying a lot for those redemptions yeah, I mean, especially if they fill it with someone else or some, from that rookie year or something. It's just you need to get the card out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to touch on the the value aspect, like you mentioned, um, not too many of them have have been selling on the secondary market. From what I've seen, I mean, I'm sure there's been a lot of private sales. Just oh, 100 percent. You know, through card shops or in person or even on trading forums and Facebook and stuff. But just looking at eBay, there's only been a few that have sold, but all of them have sold for a thousand dollars US or more. So yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. So obviously, regardless of if the card is signed itself or if it has a sticker autograph, that really hasn't had much of an impact on the value. So I think it's important to kind of keep that in mind. You know, it, it's more so about what the card actually is. This is his premier rookie card. You know, this is the Pasternak rookie card to have, period. Exactly. Like, um, we're not, like, at the end of the day, we're not autograph collectors. Like, we're card collectors. And for this card, sticker auto or not, like, this card in general is a 
big card. And so we as collectors can kind of identify with that. Sticker auto or not, um, this card is big and it's going to command some big bucks. If you were a casual fan picking up, you know, one or two cards here and there and you were really gunning for the Pasternak um, RPA from the cup, I could see you being, you know, very disappointed. You know, you wait a long time for this card and it's a sticker auto like, man, I've been waiting years to pick up that one card from my collection. Like, man, like, like I, I hear you, that sucks. But for the general, I guess, consensus um, for collectors out there, like we're card collectors. And as far as sticker auto versus on card, of course you want the on card auto, but, uh, and it shows by the secondary market and from, from other um, sales that I've um, seen, it's not affecting card value. Card collectors want the card regardless of the sticker or not. So absolutely, I, I agree. And just to kind of change the subject a little bit, as far as like the Pasternak side, just sticker autos in general. Um, I think it, any collector who have been in the hobby uh, for a number of years now um, or has seen the kind of evolution of the hobby, um, you've seen times where there are cards that um, just don't look good with a sticker auto. Um, you know, it's, it's, I mean, errors aside, you know, if it's placed upside down or whatnot, I'm not really talking that, but just in general, like just, just as far as the aesthetic goes and the card design itself, there are cards that really do not look good with, um, you know, a sticker auto. It's just placed on there. It just, it seems like it was uh, just put on there just because, hey, let's make it an autograph set. Oh, okay, you know, sure. But there are other cards where honestly, um, the cards look great. And depending on the way it was designed, I think a lot of collectors who collect, um, you know, um, especially the older in the game products w would really um, relate to this is that their cards were specifically designed to have a sticker auto. Um, not all their cards did have a sticker auto, but for the ones that did, the card design in general was designed to, to have a sticker auto in place. So when you did affix the sticker to the card, sometimes they were so well hidden, if that makes any sense, that um, you couldn't even tell it was a sticker auto. And so again, you know, some of them command big dollars and we as card collectors, honestly, for the most part, don't really care. And, um, you know, if, if you really want that card for your collection and you, and you think it looks great, chances are um, you won't mind that it's a sticker auto. You know, you want the card and, um, and hey, yeah, you want the card and, and that's enough for you. So, but it, you know, it also goes the other way where there, there are some cards that do have a sticker attached to it that you might think to yourself, hey, you know, that card would look better without the sticker on it. So it definitely goes both ways um, as far as sticker autographs are concerned and, and um, you know, and the, the value for, for other collectors. And for me personally, in my collection, Eric, I, I don't know if you feel any different, but um, I feel for me it varies as far as the sticker and on-card auto goes. I mean, obviously I have a good mix of both in my uh, personal collection, but it depends on what I'm really collecting. Um, if I'm very... Uh, specific with my collection, like my Martin Brodeur collection or my Ed Balfour collection, like those two goalies, um, they're, they're childhood heroes for me. Um, and for those card collections, um, they're relatively smaller, but the autograph cards that I do have of those guys, um, they are on card autographs. And I specifically chose to uh, go after the on card autographs for those guys um, because, you know, obviously, depending on the product, these will be very sought after cards and they will command a lot of value. So if the, if I'm going to spend a lot of coin on a card, I really want it to be, you know, the bee's knees knowing that um, especially for my Brodeur or Belfort collection, I might not pick up one for a little while. And sometimes that wasn't the case where I didn't pick up another autograph of those guys for a couple of years. So if I do pick up an, an autograph of those guys, I am really selective in the card that I choose um, to get. So in that case, I do tend to chase, you know, the on-card stuff. However, for my other collections, like my Mark andre Fleury, Fleury collection, or as some of you may know, my extensive uh, Jonas Enroth collection, I have a good healthy mix of on-card autos, but also a lot of sticker autographs as well. Because for those cards... I'm really, you know, honing in on those cards that I, I happen to like. Like, of course, I like the player, and that's the main reason for starting the collection. But um, 
you know, from beginning to end uh, in this hobby, I'm a card collector. And there are some cards in those collections where I absolutely love. And the sticker auto does not bother me at all. And I'll pick up multiples sometimes. Um, and then again, for those collections, um, there's, there's a good healthy mix of both. And to me, it does not matter at all. So uh, like, I feel like it definitely uh, depends on what you collect or what kind of corner of your collection that you tend to focus on right now or you have in the past that um, you tend to look at sticker versus on-card autographs a little bit differently. And, and that's okay. It's okay to have your preferences with the cards you spend. And, uh, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it's your choice of how you deserve to spend your money. And so it's totally okay to like one over the other. But, you know, let's be clear, like, like there is a demand for a lot of autographs in this hobby. And sticker autographs, you know, it, it has to happen. You know, if there wasn't any sticker autographs, um, card products and the industry would look a whole lot different. So for my collection, it definitely differs um, where I focus my attention to it as far as the autographs goes. Um, so Eric, I'm not sure if you have, are the same way, but um, yeah, I definitely love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it really kind of comes down to three different areas of my collection as far as this conversation goes. So starting off with, with one that isn't so much a, a big focus of my collection, but is still part of my collection is some of my higher end kind of like legend autographs, so to speak. So guys like a Gretzky and or a how right. players like I've that. Seen those. Great. <laughs> players like that. I generally gravitate more to on card autographs, mainly just from kind of a value standpoint in terms of the investment of it. You know, for, for a lot of players like that, you might be able to get a little bit better of a deal on a sticker autograph card. But for me, for players like that, I would just prefer having an on-card autograph, you know, and I think a lot of times that can also come down to the actual look of the card, like, like how you were talking about, Aaron, as far as just sometimes stickers just don't work well with a certain design. And going back to your point about some of the in-the-game autos, I think, um, you know, they were kind of notorious for, for really blending in their stickers really well. I mean, I, I still will see box break videos on YouTube of someone opening a, a box of Heroes and Prospects or something yeah. like that, and they pull an autograph card, and they're like, oh, this is, you know, like, I'm pretty sure this is on card. You know? Yeah, like it's it hides it so well, and and a couple times, like even in my own collection, I'll be scrolling in online or just or flipping through some cards, and I'm like, man, these look like on card autographs. Like they did such a good job for the most yeah. part, you know. Yeah, and sometimes I just say, oh, whatever, and sometimes I'll comment and be like, no, like they actually are stickers. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, to the point, like yeah, like stickers can be done very very well, and there have even been some uh, some products that specifically in the game i mean i think of the uh the enforcers product that they they literally made the spot for the sticker to look like a band-aid so like it's just yeah even, yeah yeah that was just awesome just playing into that even more yeah. and i really like that i i prefer for card companies to like just own it you know hey we're using stickers you know and that's, so make it the best sticker card you ever created right and um kind of interesting kind of transitioning a little bit into the next aspect of my collection but one uh sticker kind of aspect or design really it's more design than anything that i really like is back in i believe 2304 and maybe 0405 but mainly 0304 upper deck actually used a very distinct and bold sticker that was almost like a chrome silver so like you like you you see the card, oh like, yeah 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 bam like you know that's yep, a sticker yep. autograph like there's no avoiding it like it's a sticker autograph period but those things just looked cool like they I did they did like as a collector like I don't even care that it's a sticker autograph like it's cool like I think it looks awesome or so, some of the stickers they have that holographicness to it yeah and they just look neat. Like yeah. I'm, they've used a couple of different stickers from a couple of different manu sticker manufacturers over the years, but some of them just look real cool. Yeah. So I think, um, and even those, uh, the chrome silver ones that I mentioned, those are kind of disputed and debated about if people like them or not. But 
I think it was really cool to see, you know, Upper Deck say, hey, you know, we're using stickers, but we're owning it and we're going to do something cool with them. You know, I would much rather see that than just yeah. seeing a clear label. You know, obviously the clear label is going to offer a lot more versatility with what you can do with them, obviously. But I think you know, if you are using stickers, I don't see why you can't design the card around using that sticker, you know, especially like, like in a lower end product or in a product artifacts, you know, if you know that this particular set's going to have stickers, you know, for this year's auto fact set, and some of them in the past have been, have been done very well. Let's just own it. We know they're going to be stickers. So let's make them great looking cards before the stickers even applied, you know, yeah, absolutely. And then transitioning really into the second aspect of my collection that deals with on card versus sticker would be set collecting. So I'll, I'll use my, uh, my 0304 collection as an example. And I actually think somehow with the first six episodes, I've never mentioned this, but for those of you who don't know, I'm putting together a master collection of 200304 products. So I'm collecting all of the base sets from all of the 0304 hobby products. And that would include all of the short prints and autographs and rookies that, you know, that's might be insane. included within that. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> that's going to kill you. Like that's going to take your entire life. It, it might. <laughs> there's some, that, pretty... that, that, that's, that's insane. Like there's the, the flurries and oh man. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's... I, I don't know how you sleep at night with that want list hanging over your head that's unreal <laughs> yeah it's an extensive project i fully expect it'll take easily at least 10 years um good on my, you man for my checklist there are 50 sets to do and there's over 10,000 cards in total and that's insane. obviously there are some big time cards i mean you, it's the rookie year of flurry patrice bergeron brent burns um eric stahl some of Kari Lettinen's rookie cards demand big dollars. So, I mean, there's some, some pretty high end rookie content, you know, you look at, you know, there's um, premier collection and upper deck ice and obviously SP authentic and the young guns and, and all of that. But you also had all of the other manufacturers still in the game. You know, you had in the game, you had Pacific and you had tops. Yeah. It was a lot of guys in the hobby at that time. So good for you. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a fun with project. your collection. That's awesome. Yeah. But anyway, going, going off of that, obviously, if you're collecting a set, generally speaking, it's going to be consistent throughout that set, whether it's on card or, or a sticker. So for me, you know, if I'm collecting a set, you know, yeah, I might prefer that every single set is on card, but it's just, that's not how it works. So, you know, it's not like I said, oh, you know, I'm going to collect all of those three or four sets, but only if they're on card, you know, I, I don't want to deal with stickers. Like, no, I, I just, I want all of the 0304 cards. So sticker or not, I want it. And, exactly. Uh, and like you mentioned, you know, and some of the companies did a good job with, you know, how they did stickers. You know, I, I think of specifically in the game is kind of one of those ones that really owned the sticker design, you know, and did something unique with the stickers. Whereas, you know, some of the other companies didn't and they were, you know, more obvious than others and, and things like that. But um, yeah, for me, for that project, that doesn't make any difference to me. You know, it, it's really a non-factor. I, I just want the cards. Exactly. Because you're, you're a hardcore, you know, in this case, you know, hardcore set collector. And so you want those cards. You know, it doesn't matter for a sticker. It doesn't matter for not. You just want the card for your collection. Like if you were to pull a big card into the boat for this card, you wouldn't even think twice that it's a sticker auto rod because you just really wanted that card to cross it off your list. So I definitely hear you on that. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then the final thing, which, you know, kind of goes more toward, um, you know, your Enroth collection would be my player collections. And again, it's the same thing. You know, I would obviously prefer that every single autograph, even though there's not many of the guys that I collect to start with, but, Generally speaking, you know, I could not care less if it's an on card versus a sticker autograph. You know, if my guy has an autograph card, I'm just thrilled he has an autograph card. Exactly. You're like, like you're just so, thrilled he's there. Yeah. So, um, 
luckily for me, uh, both Jacob Slavin and Ryan Dezingle have been getting a lot more autograph content this year, actually, you know, looking at SP Authentic and uh, Dezingle was an OPG Platinum and um, you know, there's some other things, but it's been good to just have, you know, a decent amount of autograph cards to go after, you know, and some of them are stickers and that's fine. It really doesn't bother me at all. And uh, that's just for those guys. Um, one kind of interesting way to look at this too, I guess, is for my Jalmerson collection. As of today, he doesn't have any autograph cards. So, Which really surprises me. Yeah, Especially, I mean, you know, being on the Blackhawks, you know, standing up champ. That's surprising. Very yeah. surprising. Like, when you told me that, I was floored. I was like, there's no way. He just has one autograph at least. Apparently, he yeah. doesn't. He was um, very much kind of overshadowed throughout most of his time in Chicago, even just in terms of defensemen. You know, they always had Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook. And for the most part, or you know, for, for at least a little while, they had Brian Campbell, Johnny Oduya. You know, Nick Letty, guys like that kind of just always overshadowed him because he's such a defensive defenseman that that just doesn't get hobby attention. You know, and that's just how it is. And even during his rookie year, he just wasn't really, you know, a guy that was highly thought of, you know, or there weren't, you know, high expectations for him as a defenseman. So he didn't even really have many rookie cards anyway, um, let alone any autograph stuff. But uh, I have gotten word though it hasn't been publicly announced as being official but i've gotten intel from upper deck that he will be part of the 2019-20 chronology product and will have a hard signed autograph card in the product so i'm pretty pumped about that's that that's awesome congrats on that <laughs> yeah how many are you going to pick up you can't stop at one there's no way there's <laughs> well, no way at least at least like three we'll see we'll see and, and those cards are going to look nice yeah, yeah, They're gonna I'm look excited. really nice. Yeah, it's nice that it's it's not just some you know random MVP autograph. or like you know OPG, yeah. you know from back in the day when they did the old OPG signatures and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited that it's in a product that's. I would say people kind of view it as even though it's a new product, it's it's probably going to be more of an iconic product just because of you know how well they've documented the history of the game. So and yeah and and the you know the part one part two is is not normally done so that's another reason for sure. Yeah, so I'm really happy to see that they were able to uh, work out a deal with him to get some autographs done. You know, like I said, none of that is official. You know, so don't fully take my word for that. But the last that I was told, which I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, is that is what the plan is. You know, the cards have not been signed as of that time but the plan and intention was that he would have autograph cards in the set so yeah obviously that's uh definitely really exciting for me and i know there's probably a lot of blackhawks collectors that are you know going to be thrilled to get those cards you know, even though he's been gone for a few years at this point he definitely was a fan favorite while he was with the blackhawks and i think anybody that you know either just knows hockey really well or specifically knows the Blackhawks really well, you know, would, would tell you that it's very possible that they don't win any of those Stanley Cups without him because of how solid he was defensively. And just having that player on the blue line that could really just allow the other guys on the ice to do their thing offensively and not have to worry about the defensive side as much, um, you know, I think is, is really overlooked a lot of the time. So yeah, I think to to finally have autograph cards for him is is going to be big, not only for me but for a lot of collectors as well. So it'll be cool to to finally get those come uh, come fall. I think definitely, I'm very very excited for you to pick up those cards for your collection. Now, uh, you know, I might even pick up a, a copy and then have you sign it. <laughs> but we'll definitely have to have, see how that works out. But um, uh, just for you guys listening, um, just first off, just Thank you so much for tuning in. Well, we had a lot of um, great feedback from our last episode, uh, the White Whale episode, um, episode six. Uh, I think that was our most viewed episode to date. So um, thank you guys so much for that feedback. You guys had a lot of great questions, a lot of good feedback there. Uh, just for this episode, we just want to open up the floor once again for you guys. Uh, just get your general thoughts about the, um, the 1920 Upper Deck Stature product. Like, we know it's new, and so it's going to have a lot of feedback 
one way or the other. So we just want to get your, your thoughts on that, um, whether you like your list, dislike the product, or if you plan to open any boxes and stuff like that. Just let, people let us know and, uh, and we'll be in touch with you for sure. And uh, as far as the main topic of the episode, the Pasternak, uh, Cup RPA definitely, um, you know, brought a lot of waves of the hobby. As far as the sticker versus on card auto debate, we just want to hear your thoughts about that, about uh, that, and having sticker autographs on such a big, um, heavy card in that product after five years of it being a redemption. So um, we definitely want to hear your thoughts about that. And um, you know, is it better for that card to have a sticker? Out? autograph or just to maybe not exist at all so definitely let us know about that we're just going to be posting these on social media so definitely keep an eye out yeah i think that'll that'll end up doing it for episode seven of sunrise card cast so like aaron said thanks for tuning in we we really do appreciate all of the support that you guys have been giving us and and for those of you who have been interacting with us you know there's definitely a uh, a loyal few who pretty much are always reaching out to us yep and we really appreciate that. But for those of you who aren't, reach out to us. Like, we love talking to you guys. We love answering questions. We love cards. We love talking cards. So do it. Yeah. Like, seriously. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll sit on my phone until all hours of the night talking to you guys if you want. So, yeah. And I'm like, I truly mean that. I mean, there are some of you that I do do that with. So, yeah, do it. Please be sure to follow us on social media. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Center Ice Cardcast and on Twitter at Center Ice CC. And like we've mentioned in the past, Aaron can be found as Crease Collector on Twitter and Instagram. Please also be sure to subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice to make sure you never miss a future episode. Until next time on Sunrise Cardcast, keep collecting those hockey cards.